Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. In this series, we use the missions in the game Firefight to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. In this campaign, we are playing through the Battle of France as the French, with eight battles over the course of May and June 1940. Everyone knows about the historical outcome, a French operational and strategic defeat at the hands of the Germans. But I want to see if the French, using historical weapons, tactics and doctrine, can defeat the Germans at the tactical level. In this episode, Recapture of Villa Bocage, we must recapture the town of Villa Bocage, which has recently fallen into the hands of the enemy. Villa Bocage is a small rural town surrounded by gently sloping hills and woods. It consists of a central marketplace and dense terraced housing. Each episode, we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyze possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. The evacuation of Dunkirk is complete, but the Northern Front is lost. The Germans are now positioning to push south. We must attack and keep them off balance. In the last episode, we commenced the recapture of Villa Bocage. If you haven't seen that episode, be sure to check it out, so this episode will make a lot more sense. In that episode, we examined the terrain and considered alternative courses of action before deciding on a plan. The infantry will advance through the houses and gardens to the crossroads, they will take the crossroads, then the ridge line, and from there clear the remainder of the town. Armour will remain mobile and move to provide fire support as required. The mortar will remain in the rear. So far, the French have consolidated their hold on the western half of Villa Bocage and knocked out a 5cm Panzer Abwehrkanon 38 anti tank gun and a Panzer 35T. They are now clearing the crossroads, the intermediate objective. Godard's section has now cleared the houses opposite. Vallette's section moves into single file to clear the remainder of the crossroads. Launay's P-16 is hit on the hull upper left by an HE shell. Clear who fired it, but Launay moves out of the way. Parmentier's section moves up in single file. Goddard section moves up to the crossroads. The tanks put down a high volume of fire. Vallette urges his men forward, as does Godard. The French are taking fire from the east. Machine gun nest. Cause P-16 swings into action.
The tanks push forward. They take position to control the town square. Sir Lieutenant Kaur moves up to the machine gun nest. Sir Lieutenant Guillemot's AMR-33 also advances. German infantry are cut down as they flee across the town square. Vallette's section are finally moving to take the crossroads. They take prisoners. Gorad's team moves up on the other side of the street. Parmentier's section now moves to take over the crossroads. French armour is putting pressure on the Germans to the east. Lieutenant Sergeant's AMD-178 pushes into the town square. Sir Lieutenant Parmentier is killed by a bullet in the head. The fighting is not over. Parmentier's section renews their firing at the German machine gun nest in the east, along with the P-16 and AMR-33. The French mortar opens a fire mission on the machine gun nest. Sir Lieutenant Goddard is severely wounded by a bullet in the left leg. The officers are leading from the front and paying the price. More infantry on the northern side of the square. The mortar moves to fire for effect. The P-16 advances. As does the AMR-33. Willu exhorts his troops to move. Three infantry squads pinned on the back line is a platoon out of the fight. Parmentier's section also needs to move up. The mortar has shifted to the German troops north of the square. Hold your fire. They check fire. French armour continues to dominate. P-16 has gotten behind the German machine gun nest. The 
but the armour and infantry are dislocated, with the infantry lagging behind. Monnier's section moves forward. And Guilou. Goddard tells his men to go on without him. The left section now moves up the west side of the town square. The idea is to keep up pressure on the Germans as they withdraw. The AMR-33 moves into the square. The Panard has spotted something. Tank, a Stug 3A. The AMD-178 is hit on the hull lower left by an APCBC shell. The AMD-178 withdraws. Time for a smoke mission. The French call a smoke mission amidst the German infantry north of the square. The Stug is in an excellent firing position. This really causes a problem for the French. Parmentier's section moves across the road. Guilou moves up. Monnier moves up. The French need to consolidate their position at the square, eliminate the machine gun nest, overrun the German infantry, and deal with the Stug. The Stug continues to fire into Goddard's section at the square. They need to fall back. Fillet needs to move up. Caporal Gross and Soldat Andrieu and Simonin are all killed by a Stug shell blast in the chest. The first smoke round lands. Both sides trade blows across the town square. The infantry move up. They will clear the buildings under cover of smoke. Gulu's section advances on the machine gun nest. The P-16 is suppressing. The Shah B-1 bis moves up. Gulu orders his men to storm the machine gun nest. Monia's section follows on. Germans rush out of the building. P-16 moves to cut them off.
Laonais P-16 falls back to conduct an encircling movement. Lieutenant Sergeant now calls in an artillery HE mission on the German infantry north of the square. Guilou and Monnier move up. They will clear the Germans south of the square. The first round lands short. Check fire for now. Cause P-16 moves to outflank on the right. Lieutenant Sergeant has the Stug in his sights. Open fire. He opens fire. Parmentier's section moves up on the left. The French infantry are moving into position to take advantage of the artillery strike. Guilou and Monnier move across the street. The Germans are withdrawing. Gulu moves to single file to clear the buildings south of the square. Open fire. The left section crosses the road. Parmentier's section follows. The French open a fire mission using the Stug as the target. The intent is to disrupt the Germans before the final French assault.
the remnants of Goddard's section fall back. first round lands next to the tank. French artillery moves to fire for effect. Guns boom out. Rounds complete. The shells smash into the buildings north of the square. A smoke mission to obscure the French assault. The French units are in position for the final push. The Germans are offering no resistance. Smoke from a spotting round obscures the street behind the Stug. Cause P-16 and Lieutenant Sergeant's AMD-178 take a chance to cross the street. They take the primary objective. Core overruns a German light mortar team. Gulu's section advances through the trees east of the square. The smoke mission goes in. Vellet's men move forward, and the Shabi one, and Launay's P-16. Smoke rounds land.
the Shabi 1 and P16, moved to take the Stug. The 75mm howitzer and 47mm SA-35 gun should do the trick. The Stug is on the move. Lieutenant Sergeant's AMD-178 zeroes in. Open fire! But we will never know the result. Who do you think would have won that duel? Victory! Recapture. Recapture the town of Villebocage, which has recently fallen into the hands of the enemy. French forces. 74 survived, 6 wounded, 12 killed, 1 vehicle lost. German forces. 20 survived, 9 wounded, 59 killed, 3 surrendered, 1 vehicle lost, and 1 AT gun lost. Also, the light mortar. You took the objective in good time, and took very few losses, although there was only moderate opposition. Your commanders rate your performance as good. 2 gold stars. So, what did we learn? Urban combat usually favours the defender, and requires the attacker to apply higher than normal combat ratios. But in this battle, the French only lost 12 dead and inflicted four times as many on the Germans. Why? French World War II doctrine stated that tanks allow attack echelon units faster progress due to the particularly effective fire support they bring and the morale effect produced on the opponent. This battle illustrated the French doctrine in practice. The Germans started with excellent defensive positions and opened the engagement at long range with supporting fire from a tank and an anti-tank gun. For infantry operating alone, recapturing the town would have been somewhere between difficult and impossible. But French armour put down overwhelming fire support. This caused German morale to break and the German infantry fell back, at which time the French infantry could move up and clear the ground with relatively light casualties. The armour also provided mobility. For example, the Germans used their Panzer and Stug in the role of static bunkers providing fire support to the infantry. The French Char B1 Bis was able to move around and outflank, neutralise, then destroy the Panzer, and was about to do the same to the Stug. So, the fire support and tactical mobility provided by the French armour made the winning difference. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate and stay tuned for the next episode.